Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is. Time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And a number of people have just awared me that Greg Duchette has done a review of Eric Konevsky's cycle, which I also did a review of. So let me go ahead and put on my... Plus I've had a speech craft and let's talk about this. Now, I want to state up front, I need to apologize uh, because of a stereotype that I held. You guys know... We all have our biases, we all have our stereotypes, we all have our views. And in this case, I was wrong. I assumed because Greg was a hardcore bodybuilder and he has kind of an, an effeminate voice that he was gay. Uh, I was flat wrong. I apologize for holding that stereotype. But again, in my defense, anyone who's been around the lifting world a long time generally assumes that if someone's a hardcore bodybuilder, there's a pretty good chance that's just the way they swing, right? That's normal in that world. But you guys saw what was walking back and forth. In fact, watching his girl in the background cleaning and sweeping in her panties through his whole video was extremely distracting. I couldn't watch the video. I just kept look, looking over to the side, waiting for her to come back into the screen again. And I lost track of like listening to him. I had to stop and back stuff back up because I got distracted every time. And it's like, I can't, I can't focus on a man talking with that ass going back and forth in the panties. I can't do it. It was distracting. Greg, you, you got to tell her to quit doing that, man. You got to stop that. Like, we, 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 can't, we can't listen to the video with that going on. Um, but, again, I apologize for assuming dude was gay. He got attractive woman cleaning his house in her panties all the time. All right. So, back over to the point. Um, essentially, Greg said that Eric doesn't know what he's talking about. And I think we all agree there. Um, up front, one of the biggest points he made is that, and I haven't seen the blood work yet, I need to actually go look at the blood work and review it. He said, looking at the blood work, that there's almost no way that Eric is approaching even remotely the amounts of stuff he claimed to be on and having even decent blood work, right? That it's basically impossible. And again, I'm gonna agree with that. Like I would assume if, if Eric was using half, like if everything he was using was half dose, 50% dose of what he thinks he was putting into his body, there is no way his blood work would look even remotely healthy, right? It's not even possible. Like his blood work would look horrifically bad on 50% of what he claims to use. So assuming half doses. So Greg said in his opinion, uh, a lot of what Eric was using is either underdosed or fake. Now, I wouldn't rule that out. Because again, let's go back to the point, Eric's not a particularly bright guy. Maybe he's not sourcing stuff very well. Uh, very real possibility. Uh, and again, I think he definitely noted it on something like the, the egg bombs. And he pointed out in there, you know, that he himself has done up to 100 milligrams of, of Anadryl and couldn't even eat. It was a problem. He was trying to set a world record in the bench press. And he was upping it and trying to do that. And, and I think what I would say there is that, Greg, honestly, man, I think that is just you. That is a, uh, just a problem you have with orals, personally, right? That, that's a very personal thing. I'm going to say the majority of people, that's not a problem. Because, honestly, um, this is one of those things where the bodybuilding world has their own weird views. Actually, uh, 100 milligrams of, of Anadryl, from a medical perspective, is not even a high dose for a man. Right, that's well within what is prescribed uh, for 50-year-old men for medical conditions. Right, you're, we're within actually the therapeutic range at that point. I know that sounds crazy. You're like, that's a lot. You guys would be surprised. There, there's been human trials. This will blow people's mind. There have been human trials done in America on up to 350 milligrams every day of Anadrol. I know people, everyone's out there going, oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah, it is, but it's been done. And it, it passed through the ethics board. So there, there are a lot of people who tolerate large amounts. It has to do with your own gastrointestinal distress and stuff. You probably don't handle orals in, uh, in general very well. So over to the point with that. I mean, he did point out, though, that Eric wasn't getting any side effects once he upped it to 300. That's suspect. And, and I am going to agree with that because, I mean, at 300... Anadrol a day. If you're not experiencing side effects from that, especially on all the tests you're on, uh, that's just that's fake roll. Because that's usually where your side effects come from. Anadrol. A lot of people aren't aware of that because they they're not particularly familiar with it. Uh, it happened to me. Uh, most of your side effects from Anadrol come from stacking it with tests. 
it, it is one of those substances that to where there, there's a problem with your estrogen metabolism with it. And usually if you're on any significant amount of test or any substance that aromatizes at a high rate, uh, the side effects go up exponentially with Anadrol. So he was on a lot of tests, so therefore we would expect extreme side effects from that. Like he, he shouldn't have been able to get his bloating and stuff under control. Which kind of comes over to the point of Greg had said that, look, basically this is an example of someone who chose to just abuse gear and probably should have used more fat burners, uh, done that differently because Eric uh, basically went into it fat. Now I don't know that much about bodybuilding. Let's go back over to my point. I think bodybuilding standards are dangerous because they want you to get too lean. I don't think it's healthy for any human being to ever, for any man to be at 6% body fat ever for any reason. Right? That's unhealthy, drug free or not. Like natural bodybuilding is, is dangerous to you just because they want you to be like 6% body fat. That is unhealthy, it's dangerous, it's destructive to your body. That's no better for you than doing a little bit of gear. I mean, let's go back to that point. Uh, we have clinical trials on 350 milligrams of anadrol a day. You ask me, is that, is that healthier than being 6% body fat? I don't know, man. Based upon the blood work and clinical trials of what I've seen of blood work for people at 6% body fat natural versus 50-year-old men on high doses of anadrol, I'm going to say that's probably safer. Now, that's my opinion, says me. But you guys get the idea. Uh, but he did point out that Eric was not contest ready. He was fat. And, you know, he pointed out that Eric said, look, I didn't want to use T3 because make me flat. And he told him, that's probably what you should have used because you were, you were too fat to compete. That's why you, you lost. And he pointed out that, I mean, Eric bulked up way, way, way too fat in his off season, gains too much weight, too much water retention, everything else. Um, and, you know, that's a lot of that. He pointed out that Eric was running something like four grams of tests in the off season uh, with no AIs no AIs of any type, and so therefore he did get fat and blood. That was probably a factor in some of his fat gain. Probably was. Um, but in general, I felt like Greg more or less smashed on his choices of doses and combinations and said he just looked like he was doing random stuff, like running all these extreme amounts of tests and everything else, and then throwing in little amounts of, of more expensive DHT-based substances and uh, uh, as if they would have any effect. And that's what I would agree with. Um, Greg is right there. Usually... Guys are taking stuff like Masteron, Prima Bowl, and things like that because they want a very dry, low water retention look. Um, they're weaker for building muscle and even holding on to muscle than, say, testosterone is, just slightly. So you're generally using them for a certain look and to not gain water weight. So if you're going to run a bunch of tests with them, it doesn't make sense. They don't, they don't actually have much effect. You basically are just pissing money away because those things are all expensive. Um, and that's why if you notice guys like Greg, they end up going into his show, dropping all the tests way down and just running all those substances. Eric did the opposite, and he actually dropped out uh, the Prima Bolin at the very, very end. He dropped out his Prima Bolin at the very end, and that's the one thing he probably should have probably increased and been on. I mean, realistically, if he, if he wanted to look leaner... And even I know enough to know that. I don't do bodybuilding. But even I know that had he dropped all his uh, wet substances out and kept the Primo in and Mastron and everything else, he probably would have looked more ripped. But at the end of the day, the problem is that from a bodybuilding perspective, he went in too fat. He got too fat in his off season, And again, Greg felt that he just was all around uh, not lean enough to be competing. And he didn't put enough focus on his diet. Um, and he probably should have used more fat burners and a lot less anabolics. But at the end of the day, I think it's fair to say that probably a lot of what Eric is using is underdose. A lot of it's fake. Um, and he even slammed him for his, his discussion of GH and said, look, basically guys who are going to run 10 units of GH every day are just rich guys with money to burn. And there's definitely some truth to that. Definitely some truth to that. Because even Dorian Yates admitted that he used 8 units every day for the Mr. Olympia. Right, you guys remember the interview, and he admitted to a couple grams of gear. Right, Dorian admitted to grams of gear, but then he still said, "I used eight units of GH." Right, see the difference there? Eight versus ten. Um, and he also slammed him for saying that look, SARMs were for little Jimmys who are scared to do anabolics. And then Greg said, "Well, I use SARMs, and I'm not a little Jimmy." So uh, all in all, when you really look at what Greg had to say about what Eric's doing, he essentially called him a little child who doesn't know what he's doing, who basically bought a bunch of fake and underdose gear. 
and that's a fair assessment. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.